Shalom. All praises, honors, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rakar, Kodash. Double honors to my elders, the apostles of Great Millstone, those are the men that taught me this truth, which is the truth of the Bible, and Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rakar, Kodash, Barakatham, to the elect of Israel, that's scattered across the four corners of the globe, that's predestined to be delivered by the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, through his son, Yahweh Shai, in these last days. Now, um, the inspiration of this lesson basically came about by um, me reading this article that I just came across. Um, and the article is basically going into this new mystery pathogen, um, which they're calling disease X, okay? And, you know, upon reading this article, it basically made me uh, think of certain scriptures, certain prophecies that's mentioned in the Bible, okay? But in particular, it, made me, uh, it reminded me of what our Lord and Savior, Yahweh Shai, said unto the disciples 2,000 years ago, okay? returning i mean concerning the signs of his return okay and one of the the signs of his return was that there was going to be pestilences out there okay and that's what this article that i'm going to bring out lord willing is going into man right as a matter of fact let me just you know get the title and bring out the title first and then you know we're going to go into the scriptures from there um so what i was looking at is from um www telegraph.co.uk and it's titled World Health Organization Issues Alert on Disease X all right and this was posted March 9th 2018 okay and um, this aligns with the scriptures this aligns with the prophecies that you read about in the Bible okay and um you know like I said um you know made me think of uh, what Yahweh Shai said okay so that's where we're going to start so this is the book of Matthew chapter 24 uh, I'll start at verse 3 and I'm going to get straight to the point from there It says and as he sat upon the Mount of Olives the disciples came unto him Privately saying tell us when shall these things be and what shall be the, the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world Okay, so the disciples 2,000 years ago. They were basically asking what were going to be the signs of Yahweh Shai's return Okay, again Yahweh Shai who the world ignorantly called Jesus Christ. They were basically asking him for signs You know upon his return man you know to you know things to look out for when he when he's about to make his return okay and where it says um the end of the world that's talking about the end of an age okay because when you go into that word world there the word that you're going to see in the greek is eon which means a time period or a time frame okay or a, a rulership if you will okay so they were asking him you know what were going to be the signs of the end of a, a, a time period okay or a rulership now pursuing to um Second Ezra 6, you can start from verse 7 to 9. The scripture says in verse 9 that Esau is the end of the world and Jacob is the beginning that followeth. Okay. Now Esau, Edom, Esau, Edom is to my you so-called white people. Okay. That's your true uh, biblical nationality according to the Bible. Okay. You're the Edomites according to the Bible. Jacob, that's talking about us so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans. All right. So as I quoted, it says, uh, Esau is the end of the world, okay, and Jacob is the beginning that followeth, and that's what you're seeing playing out day in, day out, okay. You see the rise of us so called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans going out there on the street corners with Bibles in our hands, putting up these shows. That's a sign of es Esau's world coming to an end, okay, and our kingdom uh, beginning, okay. So, going back to uh, Matthew chapter 24. Now we're going to get straight to the point. Verse 7, it says, For nation shall rise against nation, which is another sign. Okay, nation rising against nation. That's going to uh, race wars. Okay, and there's going to be race wars out here, man. Especially out here in America between, you know, the Edomites and the Israelites. Okay, it says, And kingdom against kingdom, which that's going into World War Three. Okay, you're going to have certain various different countries out there, you know, building up their military might, which is what they're doing right now. Countries such as uh, North Korea, Iran. Uh, Russia, they're all building up their, their military might, they're building up their nuclear uh, arsenal right now because they're going to come up against, you know, um, this Roman, this new revised Roman Empire, okay, which is being spearheaded by uh, North America and, and um, NATO, okay, which America is a part of NATO, okay. So it says, and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines and pestilences and earthquakes in diverse places, okay. And so these are one of the signs, or these are some of the signs that we should be looking out for, man, concerning our Lord's return 
And Yahweh Shai said that there's any pestilences, man. Okay? Pestilences is diseases, man. All right? And we've been seeing diseases for the past few years. I'll give you a few names. Um, the, you had the, the Ebola outbreak out there in Sierra Leone. Okay? You had um, chikungunya. Okay? You had um, yellow fever recently. You know, I believe there's a new um, plague or a new pestilence or a new disease, if you will, out there in Nigeria right now. Okay? I believe it's called um, the Lassa fever. Okay, so these are all signs that Yahweh Shai is about to make his return, man. Okay, and now, you know, as we read in this article, which I got, now, you know, there's about to be a new uh, pestilence, a new disease, man. Okay, so um, without further ado, I'm just going to go into this article real quick and um, read a couple of paragraphs and we'll take it from there. So again, this is from uh, www.telegraph.co.uk. It says the World Health Organization uh, has put scientists and health workers around the globe on alert for a new and potentially dead pathogen, Disease X. Each year, the Geneva-based organization, which is charged with monitoring and safeguarding world health, convenes a high-level meeting of senior scientists to list diseases that pose a serious risk or sparking a major international public health emergency, all right? And the scriptures speak about that, man, okay? Because you see this um, World Health Organization, this is all part of Esau's secret council, man, okay? And they gather together, okay? They have these meetings in, in dark, okay? About how they're gonna plague, you know, about how they're gonna bring certain disease warfare in order to bring about their new world order, man. Because a part of their new world order is to cut down the world population, man, which I believe the world population that right now is that I believe in, I want to say it's like 7.5 billion, if I'm not mistaken. It's between 7.5 billion to 8 billion people on earth right now, man. Okay, and they want to cut that down, you know, you know, to, um, uh, what's that, 500 million people, okay? Because, you know, when you go to their, their Georgia Guidestones, it tells you that, okay? It tells you that, you know, they want to keep the population of earth under um, 500 million people, man. And how are they going to do that? By a way of disease warfare, man. Okay, because they want to have as much control over the people as much as possible, man. Okay, so there's no uh, resistance, if you will. All right. You know, I want to read this uh, paragraph one more time. It says, each year, the Geneva-based organization, which is charged with monitoring and safeguarding world health, convenes a high-level meeting of senior scientists to list diseases that pose a serious risk of sparking a major international public health emergency. And that goes uh, hand in hand with their plans, man. Okay, because one day they're gonna put out a crazy disease out there. They're gonna put out, you know, crazy pestilence out there that's gonna, you know, destroy people, man, okay? And, you know, the scriptures speak about that. You know, the scriptures talk about how they do things in secret, okay? About how they, you know, work evil upon their bits, right? Which is gonna lead me to my next scripture. This is Micah chapter 2 verse 1. It says, Woe unto them that devise iniquity. Okay, now the word woe represents destruction. Okay, it says, Woe unto them that devise iniquity. All right, and this is really speaking about the elite of Esau, the elite of these Edomites. Again, names such as the Rothschilds, names such as the Rockefellers, the DuPonts, the Gettys, the Oppenheimers. Okay, the ruling class of the nation of Edom, man. It says, Woe unto them that devise iniquity and work evil upon their beds. What it means by them, them working evil upon their beds, that's symbolic or like a metaphor for them meditating upon evil, man. Okay, and that's what they be doing, man, when they be having these secret meetings, okay, out there in the, Bohem the Bohemian Grove and whatnot, okay. It says, when the morning is light, they practice it because it is in the power of their hand, okay. And we know, pursuant to Joel 9 and 24, that the earth is given into the hand, meaning power, Okay, the earth is given into the, the power of the wicked. Okay, who's the wicked according to the Bible? Esau, Edom. Who's the righteous according to the Bible? Jacob, Israel. Okay, so the sutra says the earth is given to the hand of the wicked. All right, and it says here that um, when the morning is light, they practice it because it is in the power of their hand. Yeah, so it's in the power of these, the, the elite of Esau, Edom, to basically do whatever they want, man. Right, and what they want to do is bring about their new world order, man. Okay, they want to cut down the, the, the population to under 500 million, right? And they want to uh, enslave people. They want to bring about 
this implantable microchip, which is the mark of the beast, man, all right? So right now we're living in a time where they're practicing, you know, all their evil. So, you know, when they try and bring their new world order about, they have uh, as less resistance as possible from the people, man, okay? And that's what we're reading about here in this article, man, you know, because this might not be uh, the, the main plague or the main disease that's going to destroy people on, on, a ma on a mass level. This might just be, you know, something that they're practicing, man, okay, as the scripture says. So, um, let me see. Going back to this article, it says, in previous years, the list has been confined to known killers such as Lassa fever, which is currently sweeping Nigeria, like I said earlier, right? It says, and Ebola, which killed more than 11,000 people in an epidemic in West Africa between 2013 and 2016. However, this year, a ninth mystery pathogen has been added to the watch list for the first time. These diseases pose major public public health risks and further research and further research and development is needed. That's their, that's them practicing, you know, this 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 evil, man. Okay? It says, I read it again, these diseases pose major public health risks and further research and development is needed, including surveillance and diagnostics. It says said the WHO in a statement, disease X represents the knowledge that a serious international epidemic could be caused by a pathogen currently unknown to cause human disease, man, all right? And this is uh, Bible prophecy, man, all right? And, you know, the next scripture I'm going to go to is this here in 2nd Ezra. Let me see. Uh, I mean, the point is in verse 10 and 11. But I'm going to start from verse 1, you know, for edification's sake. It says, Behold, speak thou in the ears of my people the words of prophecy, which I will put in thy mouth, saith the Lord. Okay? And this was a commandment that was given unto our forefather, okay, the prophet Ezra, man, in the days of old. Which the prophet Ezra, if you can receive it, he's back here in the reincarnation, man. Okay? He's among us, prophesying, man. Okay? Doing the, the, the will of Yahweh Bashmah Hashem, man, as he did in the days of old. But it says... Speak thou in the ears of my people. Who's the Lord's people? The Israelites, man. Our so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans. We're the Lord's people, man. Okay, we're his chosen vessel. It says, the words of prophecy, which the word prophecy simply means to say before, man. Okay, and that's what we do here at Great Millstone. We say things before they take place by way of the scriptures, okay? Which, you know, the reason we do that is because that's the spirit of Yahweh Shai, man. Okay, as it says in um, Revelation 19 and 10. It says the witness of Yahweh Shai is the spirit of prophecy, man. So that's why we're, we're constantly prophesying, all right? Uh, beginning with our apostles, the elders, all right? And the men of Great Millstone, man. That's what we, we be doing here. That's our uh, forte, if you will. So it says, which I will put in thy mouth, saith the Lord, all right? And, you know, that's letting you know that we're not coming out of our own, our own mouths, if you will. Because whenever we, be, whenever, we go, whenever we be going out there on the highways and byways, on the street corners... We have a Bible in our hand, man, and we become we come out of the, the we come out of the Bible, man. We speak the Lord's words, man. Okay, we you know we break things down according to how you know the, the Spirit gives us the interpretation, but it's by the Holy Spirit, man. It's the Spirit of of truth, man. All right. So it says, I call them to be written down in paper, for they are faithful and true. All right, and that's why we have the Bible because the visions, the prophecies that were given unto our forefathers, the prophets of old. When they, got, when they received these uh, visions, they wrote it down on paper, man. Okay, they recorded it on paper and they're basically here for us in these last days, man. Okay, for those same prophets that were back there that are reincarnated in today so they can break it down for the people, man. Okay, now I'm going to jump down to um, verse, let me see, verse 10. You know, going back into the, the topic of this, this lesson here, you know, regarding the, the, the disease, the disease warfare and whatnot. It says, Behold, my people is led as a flock to the slaughter. I will not suffer them now to dwell in the land of Egypt. Okay? And the, the flock that's being spoken about here is talking about the nation of Israel. Okay? Because we're likened unto sheep, man. We're likened unto, unto lambs in the sight of Yahweh Bashmah Hashem. All right? And two thirds of our people are going to be, you know, carried away to slaughter, man. Okay? But for not, you know, returning back unto Yahweh Bashmah Hashem. Okay? It says, um, I read it again. Behold, my people was led as a flock to the slaughter. 
I will not suffer them now to dwell in the land of Egypt. Yeah, because Yahweh Bashmah Ashai has got a remnant, man. All right, he's got a remnant of his people, uh, alluding to the one third of the nation of Israel, right? One third of you so called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans that are part of the elect. Yahweh Bashmah Ashai is not going to suffer you to dwell here in the land of Egypt, man, which the land of Egypt, pursuant to uh, Revelation 11 and 8, is America, man. Okay? It says, I will not suffer them now to dwell in the land of Egypt, which is not, again, it's not speaking about ancient Egypt, it's speaking about a new Egypt, okay? That new Egypt being America. It says, verse 11, but I will bring them with a mighty hand and a stretched out arm, all right? And that mighty hand and stretched out arm that's being spoken about there in that scripture, that's being about uh, Yahweh Shai coming back to gather his elect, all right? And deliver them from the coming destruction, World War Three, all right? Leviathan, Yahweh Shai is gonna beam them up before all hell breaks loose, man, all right? So I read that one more time. It says, but I will bring them with a mighty hand and a stretched out arm, yeah. Yahweh Shai right now is in the spirit world on the right hand side of the heavenly father, Yahweh, man. And he's that, uh, that mighty hand that we were reading here, man. The mighty power, okay, the stretched out arm. That's Yahweh Shai, man, okay. It says, and smite Egypt, which Egypt here again is cold word for uh, America, with plagues as before, and will destroy all the land thereof. Egypt shall mourn, and the foundation of it and the foundation of it shall be smitten with the plague and punishment that Yahweh Bahashem Yahweh Shai shall bring upon it. Okay? And so, you know, this disease X, this just might it just might be that plague, man, you know, that you know destroys many different lives, man. Okay? But on the left hand side, man, because whoever dies by way of these plagues, man, by way of these uh, various different disease warfare, right, of our people, you're of the two third, man. Okay, because the elect, they're going to be delivered from the, these uh, various different plagues, man. Okay, so Lord willing, this was edifying. You know, Lord willing, you know, you brothers was edified through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bashmah Shai. And if I, you know, come across any more news, Lord willing, I'll bring it out. So, Shalom.